Hey everyone, Robin here, and I am happy to be coming to you today to share five tips that every entrepreneur needs to know in order to grow their online business. So those of you who have been around for a while may have heard me talk about my five C's of personal branding. And the, the reality is that when we're trying to start a business or grow a business online, we can get really inundated with all of the messages that are out there. The things that other entrepreneurs, that people who appear successful are telling us to do. But a lot of times, number one, it becomes chaotic because there's so much information coming in that we're on information overload. And so it's really hard to focus and decipher and discern what is going to work for us and how we can make all of these recommendations come together for our own business, for our own personal growth and for the own growth or for the growth of our business and then the people that we desire to serve. So today I want to kind of squash some myths by really talking about the five things that you can actively do in your business, for your business, shutting out all those other things that you're hearing about, the th you know, what other people are saying to you online and really focusing on the actions you can take, whether you're ready to hire a coach or not ready to hire a coach. These are things that you can start doing, start implementing that will help you at least attract your soulmate clients. You can start building from the ground up. You can take all of this information from the place you're at and start growing and scaling. So you no longer have to struggle or fight for the attention of your audience. I'm going to give you all those clues that you need to really attract those people that you are desperately wanting to serve and making the money that you deserve to be making in your business. So the first thing we're going to talk about is clarity. Everything begins with clarity. And I want to preface this by saying that if you have any mindset barriers, those need to be cleared out before you're going to discover clarity. It is impossible to experience complete clarity if you're struggling with comparison, imposter syndrome, self-doubt, if you are not in a healthy place mentally, from a mindset perspective, your brain is going to hold you back. It's gonna cause you to procrastinate. You're not gonna do the exercises that you need to do in order to discover clarity. So you can listen to all of this today. You're definitely going to find very, very, very helpful information, but I want you to focus on the fact that if you are in a place of fear, procrastination, anxiety, you've got to do that work first in order to move yourself forward in your business because all of those negative thoughts, those ang anxious feelings, all of those things are going to be tied to the amount of action that you're going to be able to take and whether or not that action is going to be effective and intentional. So we're not going to talk about mindset today in depth, but I will say that it is very critical for the growth of your business in terms of discovering complete clarity so that you can move yourself forward. Okay, so let's talk first about clarity. And um, just so you know, I do have some notes and I will be referencing them from time to time so that I don't miss anything because there's a lot packed into this training and I want to make sure that I hit all of it today. Um, to help you as best as I can possibly help you. If you come on on the Facebook Live, go ahead and put your name and everything in the comments. If you have questions, do not hesitate to ask them. If you are listening to this on the podcast, feel free to email me after you listen if you have specific questions. I would be happy to answer any and all questions that you have. And you can email me at info at therobingraham.com and I will see that email and I will answer all of your questions. Um, trying to think of any other housekeeping issues. I think we're good. So I will also be airing this on the podcast so you can always go back and re-listen if you want to. It will also be on the YouTube channel. So there will be ways to access this information. Again, in addition, there is a blog 
post up on the website and all of the information addition, in addition to links to other things that I reference are on the blog, in the blog post as well. And you can find that by going to therobingraham.com and just click on the blog and you'll have straight access to it. Okay, so I'm going to put my glasses on because I don't wanna miss anything. All right, okay, so first is clarity, first up. And when I talk about clarity, there are multiple things that have an impact in your business if you don't have clarity or you do have clarity. So let's talk about those. The very first thing is your purpose. You may feel a calling on your heart. You may feel like you have a purpose, that there's something greater out there for you to do, but you're just not sure of what that is. So if this is you and you are struggling to discover what it is that you're being called to do, what it is that you can do to serve other people, what it is that your life experiences have brought you to this place for, here's an exercise that you can do. And this is something that I do with my clients, even if they are in a place where they are pretty sure what they want to do and they're pretty sure who they want to serve, we still run through this exercise because it really does help you align your values, visions, and passions in a way that your your purpose becomes so solid, so clear that going forward, everything that you do is aligned. So when we talk about your purpose, here's an exercise you can do. Number one, list out your values. Number two, make a list of your visions. Number three, make a list of your passions. Somewhere in those lists, there's going to be overlap. The words may not be identical, but as you dig deep into these three things, you are going to see similarities and where those three things kind of marry each other or align with each other, that is where you're going to discover clarity around your purpose. So let me give you an example. So if you list your values out, and if you don't know your core values, if you don't know what those values are that you truly stand for and will not waver on, then I'm gonna suggest that you go to jamesclear.com. He is the author of Atomic Habits, amazing person in terms of the content and the information he puts out. He has kind of condensed a list of values that you can go and look at. Take a look at that list of values on his website as you look at that list, maybe write down five to 15, maybe actually do 10 to 15. And then from there, narrow that down to seven to 10. And then from there, take it down to three to five. And those three to five values are gonna be the values that you're not willing to waver on, that you're going to hold true to no matter what stage you are in your business, no matter what you're doing across your business or your life. Your visions go all the way back to childhood. All, and then you know, gradually work your way forward. What dream did you have of being when you were a child? What did you see yourself being? What was that innermost desire to be when you were a little child? And it didn't happen because there were demands. You were told you had to go to college. You were told you had to be X, Y, Z, or you had to make X amount of money. You had to be such and such in order to be seen as a success. Maybe there was a family business. Maybe there was a lineage that were doctors or pharmacists or lawyers or whatever, and you had to follow suit. But that wasn't fulfilling. Or maybe you stepped away to become a stay-at-home mom, and now you're trying to rediscover your purpose and rediscover what you can offer back to the world now that your kids have grown and flown. What are those visions that you have for yourself? And who in those visions do you see yourself serving? For me, it's a teacher. There was always a teacher in me. And today, you know, coaching is teaching. Like what I am doing every single day is teaching other people how to do their business, how to market their business, how to build their business, how to grow their business. It's teaching that I'm so in love with. And then passions. What is it that fuels you? What lights you up? What gives you butterflies in your belly? What really makes you feel happy and joyful and like you're accomplishing something what moves you write down those three lists and then see where the crossover is and i would love for you to come back to this post later and tell me after you did this exercise what you came up with 
where were the similarities and what you've discovered is your calling or your purpose. And maybe it's that you already knew all that, but this exercise just helped you fine tune your niche or fine tune your purpose so that now you have more clarity than you had before. Okay, the next thing after your purpose is your soulmate client. Who is that person? Who are the people that you feel called to serve? And what specifically do those people need? What is the problem that they have that you can solve for them? That you alone can solve for them in the way that you can solve it. And that's an important distinction because there's almost nothing new on this planet. We are almost all doing something that someone else is also doing. So it's really important to keep that in mind that don't look at your soulmate client and think to yourself that, well, they're not going to need my service because so-and-so already does this. Listen, there are a million coaches out there, but not all coaches do everything that I do, for example. I help with mindset. I teach tech and tools and strategies and the behind the scenes of the business. And I help with brand marketing strategies so we can get you seen and heard and make an impact and make money faster. So there's multiple layers to my business, but and there's multiple skills that I have that other people don't have, but yet we all call ourselves coaches, right? So it's really important for you to get rid of any thoughts that are telling you because your brain is going to fill your, is gonna come up with junk, just brain junk, period. That is not true. It's just telling you things and those are distractions that you have to work through. But what is really important is to recognize the fact that every single aspect of your life, every part of your journey has led you right to where you are today so that you can fulfill that purpose, that calling that's on your heart. If you have that calling and you know that purpose, think of it as a magnet. There's someone else out there that is just waiting for you to come in and serve them. They have the need on their heart that you have the answer to or solution for. Okay, so that Think of, when you think about your soulmate client, think exactly about the problem they have and how you can serve that or answer, solve that problem. Okay, how can you help? Now, I kind of went through all of this already, but your soul, soulmate client is 10 steps behind you. That may look like 10 years, five years, three years, three months, but they are behind you and they need to learn from what you've experienced, the journey you've been on, and the skills that you've garnered over the years, from the mistakes you've made, from the times you've failed and learned. All of those things, all of those parts of your journey and those experiences are how you can now serve these people that are just behind you, coming up behind you and have the same problem you had when you started out that you can now solve for them. So that's, really having clarity around what that is. And sometimes it just takes, you know, doing that exercise with your to discover your purpose and then mapping out all of these experiences that have led you to where you are to be able to have that purpose, to have that calling and now answer it. And then also clarity means aligning yourself and your business with your values. So we already touched on the values. I'm not going to dive a lot deeper into that. But if you don't have clarity around um, your values, you're going to struggle with clarity around every aspect of your life. And I have to say that your values are going to determine the impact that you make across all borders or all aspects of your life. I don't know where I got borders from, but all aspects of your life. Okay, so you want to know. First of all, what your purpose is, dive deep into that clarity, discover your values, align yourself with your values, discover who your soulmate client is, really dive deep and map that out. Know everything about them. And when I say everything about them, I I personally don't think that you need to know like how much money they make or the design brand of clothes they wear and all of those nitty gritty things. What you need to know specifically is the problem that they have that you can solve for them. If you want to have clients that are high achieving and willing to invest in you and your service, then obviously you're going to target a certain um, demographic. You're going you're gonna to target people in a certain economic bracket. But let me just tell you this. This is a mindset trick too. Whether or not people choose to work for you or with you is, or hire you is not about the money. 
because there are resources out there. And you can listen to several podcast episodes that I've had. You can listen to um, me talk other trainings and things like that. It's really not about the money because there are resources out there. So I don't want you to use money as a limiting factor. We'll do a training shortly um, on prestige and what your brand prestige is. So are you a Walmart brand? Are you a Target brand? Are you a Bergstorp and Goodman brand? Where does your audience fit in terms of your brand prestige? And that's something that you also need to know. So that is part of clarity. Part of mapping out your soulmate client is knowing what your business prestige is. But most importantly, it's knowing the problem that you solve and the person that you can solve it for. Okay, so let's move on from clarity. Let's talk about being cohesive. Now, when we break down your business and your brand, your personal brand, and every business has a personal brand. If you're an entrepreneur or a small business owner, you are a personal brand. What that means is that you are the head of your business and people buy based on trust. So your brand, your personal brand is what other people think, say, and feel about you. What does your community think, say, and feel about you? What do your friends, your family, your network, your potential clients, what do they think, say, and feel about you? This matters. This is your personal brand. Your branding is how you communicate what makes you unique, what makes you stand out from everybody else in your same area of exper expertise or your niche. How do you differentiate yourself from everyone else to control that perception that people have of you? And then your brand identity are those brand assets, like your color palette, um, your topography, your um, graphics, your logo, the things that are identifying factors. So when we talk about being cohesive, we are talking about using those brand identity assets to keep everything cohesive from your website to your social media platforms so that you can become readily um, recognizable. Once you're recognizable, you become memorable. The more memorable you are, the more people trust you and the more shareable you become. So we really wanna have a focus on being cohesive so that if you think about stopping the scroll on social media, you want to have people recognize you so readily that they stop their scroll because they know that that's you and you have something important to say and you're gonna help them through that post. So that is what being cohesive is all about. And that is gonna help you build trust. When we have clarity around our business, we have more confidence. When we have more confidence, we trust ourselves more. Likewise, when we have clarity, our audience has clarity about what we do, who we are, and how we're going to serve them. And when they have more clarity around us, then they have more confidence in us. The more confidence they have in us, the more they're going to trust us. So the more recognizable and memorable you become, the more people trust you. So that is where being cohesive comes into play. It does go alongside with clarity because you also have to be completely clear on all of those assets and what you want to be recognized as. And keep in mind, and this is a completely different training, but keep in mind that colors have psychology. So when you are looking at your business as a whole, you want to make sure that that color psychology is in play. You know, do you want to, how do you want your people to feel? How do you want them to perceive you? And um, what do those colors mean? Do they go along with the type of business that you have? All things to think about when you think about being cohesive. Now, next is consistency. That's the third thing that I wanna focus on today. And when we talk about being consistent, we talk about messaging. Now, I didn't bring up messaging, I didn't bring up copy, I didn't bring up content when we talked about being cohesive. But when we talk about being consistent, I want to absolutely 100% focus on that content part. It does need to be cohesive as well because your messaging cannot vary from one platform to another. But when we talk about being consistent and cohesive, we're talking about that message is the same on your website to your social media platform. We want to create zero confusion 
confused people do not buy. So we want to make sure that we are creating zero confusion. We are creating 100% clarity around everything that we put out into the world about us and our business. So if you have information, and we're going to call that copy on our web on your website. That copy, that information that is on your website should be the same as what you put on social media. Now, you can add additional information outside of the copy on your website, but the root, the core of that message on your website should be consistent across everywhere else that you post content and information. The being consistent will also help you build trust. Remember I said earlier, trust determines buying practices. So every single thing we do, it has a goal of building trust so that people will buy from us. So that being consistent will help build trust because the more people see your message, again, the more they're going to recognize your message, your message is going to become memorable. And here's the key about becoming memorable. When, well, we'll get to that in a second when I talk about content, but the, the key is to become more trustworthy so that people will purchase from you. And that's why you want to be consistent with your messaging. Create zero confusion and nothing but clarity. So it all links back to clarity. The next of the five tips is related to content. So we've kind of touched on this because yes, your content should be cohesive. Your content should be co consistent, all of those things. But the key with your content is to create an emotional connection with your audience, with your soulmate clients, so that you can build relationships. Relationships will ultimately lend to building community. And we'll get to community in a little bit as that is the fifth C. But when we talk about, when we talk about your content, um, it really and truly is the deal breaker for building that connection with your audience. You want to not only educate your content, your audience, you don't want to only inspire them. You want to allow them into your world so that you can create that perception that they have of you. So you're going to share personal things. You're going to share things about your business, but your content has to be so rooted in your values and that clarity that people understand exactly who you're serving, exactly what you do and exactly how you serve them. Your why comes into play for your content as well because you really want people to understand 100%, without a doubt, zero confusion, who you are, what you do, who you help, how you serve them, where you serve them, and why you serve them. So those are all very, very important. Now, when we talk about content, it becomes can become very overwhelming. And there are all these people that say, oh, you have to post every day. Oh, you have to blog every day or every week. No. What I want you to focus on when it comes to content, a couple of different things. Number one is going to be start with a core piece of content. Maybe if you have a podcast like I do, maybe your core piece of content comes from your podcast. Maybe your core piece of content comes from a blog post. Maybe you're using social media as a core place to create content. I do not recommend that. Actually, I highly do not recommend that because at any given point in time, social media could disappear. You don't own those platforms, therefore you don't own your content that's on those platforms. So I want you to really focus on having another core place to house your content. I personally believe that your website is the home of your business and you should have a blog. If you're a small business or an entrepreneur, no matter what line of business you are in, having a blog is going to help Google recognize you as the expert that you are in your industry or your space. And it's gonna give you an opportunity to constantly provide value for your audience. Now, for me, I have both a blog and a podcast. A lot of times my podcast is converted, every time my podcast is converted to a blog. That helps with SEO. It gives backlinks back to my guest and it gives other people an opportunity to backlink to my website. That's a bonus when it comes to SEO. But the other thing about blogging is that every single time you put a blog out, Google is seeing you as giving the world information that's needed. And that's why SEO is so important with blogging. That's again, is another training. 
but I want you to realize how important it is to have that cornerstone of content somewhere that is not social media. But then you take that cornerstone of content and you repurpose it. And that's the most beautiful thing about creating content. And it really makes it makes your life 20 times, 100 times easier when you repurpose your content. So start with that core piece of content, take that core piece of content and then repurpose it to different places. So out of a blog post, you can create social media posts. You can do a live video or a live training just like I'm doing today. There are multiple things that you can do. You can take a blog post and you can break it down and have probably like, you know, 10 or 20 posts out of that one blog post. You can use it for quotes. You can use it to then repurpose for your email marketing campaigns. So you have so many opportunities to repurpose your content versus constantly reinventing the wheel. And it's really important to track what content really resonates with your audience. What do they want more of? What is engaging to them? What is inspiring them? What do you see is really working to build that relationship with your audience so that you can continue to build that community? Now, repurposing content is so, 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 so great. And it is another way to build your community. And an opportunity to build community is an opportunity to build your business. So what do I mean by that? Your community, and community is the fifth thing that we're going to discuss today. Your community starts with your family and friends. As you start to grow your business, your community is going to grow. But when you start with your family and friends and they start seeing what you're doing and how you are putting out all this value to the world, they're going to understand what you're doing. The more clarity you have, the more clarity they're going to have. So then the more they're going to share you, they already trust you. So it's really important to start with that core base of people that trust you to grow your business. So your community starts with those people that are already in your network, already in your circle, already trust you they're going to start sharing you with the world the more clarity they have around what you're doing. They're readily, uh, readily willing to share you because they already trust you. They already think you're awesome. They already love you and adore you and want to share you and want to help you. So start your community with the people that are already in your circle. When you create valuable content, and you repurpose that content in different places so that people can really see and understand who you are and what you do, your community is going to grow because you're going to build relationships. The more relationships you build, the more opportunities you're going to have to expand your community and have opportunities for collaboration and referrals. When I talk about collaborating, you know, so many people look at the world as there's so much competition. There, I can't do this because there's so much competition, nobody's ever gonna hire me. Totally a bad mindset. Because the reality is we all do something unique and like I said earlier, every experience we've had in life has led us right where we are today to be able to serve the people that we are being called to serve. So when you look at building that community, collaborate with people, even if they're in the same space as you. Because the reality is that your experiences, your values, what you have to offer and the way you solve problems is different than the other people that are doing something similar or the same as you. Their ideal audience is most likely different than your ideal audience. And you have different things to offer. So even if your audiences overlap, you have different things to offer and people may resonate more with you than resonate with somebody else. So take advantage of opportunities to collaborate. When you are asked to participate in a summit, participate in that summit. When you are asked to be a guest on a podcast, be a guest on that podcast. Podcasting guesting is a form of PR, but it is also a form of collaboration because you are joining that person and sharing your knowledge to help them support their audience. The beautiful thing is that if they are, the, the audience already trusts that podcast host. So then they're going to automatically trust you because that podcast host trusted you to bring you on their show. So you start to build your audience out from there. You build your community out from there. Again, that word trust, everything is based on trust and that all comes back to clarity. So the more you expand your community through collaborations, the 
bigger your referral source is going to grow. And the bigger your referral source you, that you grow, the more opportunity you have to get clients. Okay, so in summary, all five C's are connected to clarity. And clarity leads to trust. Trust determines buying practices. And so at the end of the day, we want to focus on achieving a high level of clarity so that we can build trust to not only control that perception that other people have of us, but also build trust so that we can have a bigger impact, can attract more clients, and make more money. Okay, that concludes this training. I hope you all found this so helpful. I would love to hear from you. So after you do the exercise around your purpose or just any questions you have around this training, maybe you just feel kind of stuck, send me an email and maybe we can connect even live for a free discovery call. But I would love to hear from you and see how this training actually impacted you and the way you are thinking about your business and growing your business. If you are curious about what it looks like to work with me, you can easily book a free strategy session with me. They take anywhere from 20 to say 45 minutes, depending on the number of questions you have. And we can determine if you're at a place where you're ready to hire a coach or if there's anything that I can do to help you on that call. But if you're curious about working with me and what it's like to go behind the scenes, um, a day in the life um, working with me, I would love to entertain those questions as well. So I will put the link to my calendar in the comments. So if you want to book that call, you can do so. And also, if you are interested in my free ebook on the purpose to results method and the six things you need to build a strong foundation for your business, I will put the link to download that in the comments as well. And that is also going to be in the show notes. So if you're listening to this on the podcast, you can discover those links in the show notes, or you can just go straight to the website, therobingraham.com. You can connect with me there, or you can um, send us an email and then, or book a call from us there as well. So thank you everyone for listening. Thank you for attending the training and God bless all of you and I love you and I will see you next week for another training.